Hi, I'm Savish from the channel Al Muqaddima, and today I'm gonna show you the family tree of Genghis Khan. I'll be using Matt's Asian Royal Family Trees chart, which is available as a poster from our website usefulcharts.com. Now, ideally, would have a chart much, much, much bigger to get the family forest of all the descendants of Genghis Khan on it, but we're gonna skip a few thousand of his descendants to make it more compact. As you can see, Genghis Khan is at the middle of this chart because he was very important in Asian and even European history. His descendants continued to rule some parts of Asia in one form or another all the way to 1920. A quick note on his name. In Mongolia, it's pronounced something like Chinggis Khan, which is quite close to how we in Pakistan pronounce it, which is Chinggis Khan. I'll cut the difference and call him Chinggis Khan so that no one walks away unoffended. Genghis Khan was born Temujin in the Mongol Borjugid clan, which is why his dynasty is often called the House of Borjugin. He traced his ancestry to a warlord named Bodunchar Monkag, who died around 900 CE, though the secret history of the Mongols does trace his lineage some 23 generations back to animal ancestors, namely a deer and a wolf. How they got together and produced a baby, I cannot say. Everything before Bodhan Char is either legend or straight up myth. Another famous ruler who could trace his ancestry to Bodhan Char was Timur the Lame, who belonged to the Barlas clan of the Mongols. Hence, he wasn't Chinggis's descendant, but rather a very distant cousin. This remained a source of problem for Timur throughout his life concerning the legitimacy of his rule. Before Genghis Khan, there wasn't such a thing as Mongolia. Rather, there was an area of land with very blurry boundaries that the various Mongol tribes lived and moved around in, something like with Germany and the Germanic tribes. These Mongol tribes formed loose confederacies from time to time. One such confederacy was formed with Genghis Khan's ancestors at the helm. The term Khan means something like chief or leader and eventually came to mean king. Chinggis' great-grandfather, Kabul Khan, held the title of the Khan of the Kamag Mongol, which means something like the leader of all Mongols, pointing to the fact that most Mongol tribes were united in a confederacy under his command. Kabul Khan's great-grandfather was the one who had started the efforts to unite all Mongol tribes together and turn them into a local power. Kabul Khan was able to achieve quite a lot of success in this mission, so much so that the Chinese emperor invited him to Beijing in an attempt to win him over, though Kabul Khan wasn't impressed. According to one story, he got drunk and tweaked the emperor's beard. He was barely able to escape with his life. After Kabul Khan, first his brother Ambagai Khan and then his son Hatula Khan ruled as the Khans of the Kamak Mongol. Ambagai Khan had to pay for his brother's insults to the Chinese emperor with his life. He was defeated and crucified. Though Hatula Khan was able to respond and lead raids against the Chinese, after him the confederacy didn't elect a leader and fell into their old ways. Chinggis's father, Yasuge, wanted to unite the Mongols once again and claim the title of the Khan, but so did everyone else. Yasuge had to prove himself. He kidnapped a rival's newlywed wife and married her around 1159. He then made her his chief consort, meaning that only her children would be considered legitimate heirs. One of those children was Temujin, born around 1160, give or take a few years. According to legend, Temujin was born grasping a blood clot in his fist, which meant that he would become a great leader, as is often the case with prophecies written decades after the event they're supposed to predict, it came true. Yasuge died when Temujin was around 10, apparently poisoned by Tatars, the old rivals of the Mongols. This put Temujin in a very bad position. He was looking for allies just to be able to survive. Even his cousins, the descendants of Ambagai Khan, abandoned him, his mother, and his siblings. All the hardships of this period turned Chinggis Khan into the great warrior and leader he is known as today. One remarkable story from this time is about him killing his brother in cold blood after he stole some fish that Temujin had caught. Sometime after that, he was imprisoned by a rival clan. These stories again and again reinforce the importance of family. At age 16, Temujin married a girl named Porte, a marriage that had previously been arranged by his father. 
At the wedding, his in-laws gifted a beautiful gown to his mother, which Temujin instead took to the leader of a powerful clan as a gift to cement an alliance. This man was Togril, his father's sworn brother. Soon after this, there was a raid on his camp by the tribe from whom Temujin's father had kidnapped his mother. Most people were able to escape, except there was no horse for Borte. She was abducted by the raiders. This is considered a major event in Temujin's life and hence in world history. Temujin gathered his allies, including Tughril, whom he called father, and his own blood brother, Jamuka. He attacked his wife's abductors, who fled in panic. He chased after them, calling for Borte. She saw him and escaped from the cart she was being taken away on, and the two young lovers fell into each other's arms. Around this time, the alliance between Temujin and Jamuka broke down. The secret history makes a point of showing Jamuka as a bad leader and Temujin as a good one. Temujin's few but loyal followers gave him the title of Chinggis Khan, meaning fierce leader, sometime around 1198, though the date isn't mentioned in the secret history. This title was in response to Jamuka's title of Gor Khan, meaning universal Khan, and Togril's title of Fang, meaning prince in Chinese. By the year 1190, Togril also left Genghis and joined Jamuka, though their alliance also fell apart. Genghis picked them one by one and defeated them. In the process, he defeated many tribes and built a reputation as a great warrior. In 1206, in an assembly of the tribes known as Kurultai, he was elected as the Khan of all Mongols. He had successfully united the Mongol tribes. He formed a new administration where merit and loyalty, not blood ties, determined the rank. He commissioned the adaptation of a script for the Mongolian language so that it could be used to keep records, though this is not the traditional Mongol script that is used in Mongolia today. He also established a law code for the Mongols, though more famously he waged a series of wars against neighboring kingdoms which were continued after his death. These wars are known collectively as the Mongol invasions and eventually resulted in the Mongol Empire becoming the largest contiguous land-based empire ever. He himself defeated the Karakite in Central Asia, Khwarezmia in Persia, and Western Shah and Jin in China. He had a lot of sons, but keeping with Mongol tradition, only the sons of his chief wife were considered heirs to him. Chinggis and Borte had four sons. The eldest, Jochi, was born nine months after Borte's return from her captors, so there was a question mark on his parentage. Chinggis never treated him as if he wasn't his though, but that doesn't mean that the other members of the royal family didn't. Jochi and his younger brother Chagatai famously didn't get along very well and argued due to this very problem. The great Khan, Chinggis Khan himself, died in 1227 during a campaign against the Western Shah dynasty. The exact cause of his death is debated. It's possible that he fell from a horse during a hunting trip. According to his wishes, he was buried in a grave probably around his birthplace without any markings. Chinggis's empire was divided among his four sons, three of whom were to remain subservient to the fourth. Among his sons, Jochi Khan was the eldest, but he had actually died before Chinggis, hence his son, Batu Khan, got the land farthest from home, keeping with Mongol traditions. His empire came to be known as the Golden Horde. The Golden Horde eventually expanded to include everything east of Poland and even Hungary and some parts of Eastern Europe, all the way to the Adriatic coast. Batu's brother Berke was the first member of the dynasty to convert to Islam. The Golden Horde's longest reigning Khan, another Muslim, was Ozbek Khan. After him, the Golden Horde declined and died out by the year 1500. The second son of Chinggis Khan, Chagatai Khan, got the land between Mongolia and Persia. He was kind of the middle child of the Mongol Empire, and hence his empire is kind of unimportant, but they managed to stick around till 1680. While they didn't do much themselves, they did spawn two great empires. First, it was fighting alongside and against the Chagatai Khanid that Timur the Lame started his conquests. Second, it was a descendant of Chagatai Khan and Timur named Babur who founded the Mughal Empire in India, one of the richest empires in history. The third son, Ogdai Khan, got Chinggis's title of the Khan of all Mongols. He was actually the first to use the title of Khakan, which was then retroactively applied to his father. He was a decent Khakan and continued his father's legacy. He built a new capital at Karakorum and finished putting together the administration. He expanded the empire all the way to Poland, though that was more his father's generals than him. 
His nephew Badu, like I mentioned, was involved in the conquest of Eastern and Central Europe. Though right after finishing the conquest of Hungary, Badu got the news that Ogadai had died and so he returned from his conquest to his capital. It's possible that if Ogadai hadn't died, Badu would have gone through Vienna all the way to Rome. So perhaps Ogadai Khan's death saved Western Europe. Ogadai drank so much that an official was appointed to count the number of goblets he drank so they could control his intake. The number went down, but only because he got a bigger goblet. He died in 1241, around the age of 55. He wanted to be succeeded by a grandson, but his widow took charge of the administration and wanted to put her son, Guyuk Khan, in power. Guyuk Khan was deeply unpopular, had a lot of health issues, probably due to alcohol abuse, and was suspicious of everyone. Akurultai was called to name him Khakan, but many members of the dynasty, especially Batu Khan, didn't support the candidate. So the empire was technically without a Khakan for five years, while Guyuk's mother was all but empress. Ever so suspicious, Guyuk Khan led an army to arrest Batu, but died on the way, most likely from health issues, plunging the empire into a succession crisis. The fourth and youngest of Chinggis Khan and Borte's sons, Tului Khan, keeping with Mongol tradition, got his father's estate in the heartland of Mongolia and western China. He died shortly into his brother Ogadai's reign. The story goes that Ogadai fell ill, probably due to alcohol abuse, and the shamans offered him an opportunity, a life for a life. Tolui offered to give up his life for his brothers, and so Tolui died, and Ogadai lived another good 10 years. His descendants eventually controlled most of the Mongol successor Khanids. This came thanks to his widow Sorkaktani, who was a Christian Turk and a remarkable woman. After her husband's death, she was put in power by Ogadai instead of their son Monke. Let me repeat that. She wasn't a regent ruling on behalf of a child. She was a queen in all but name, and Monke was actually an adult. She gained a lot of influence, and she was mentioned very favorably by everyone who mentions her. Even Muslims mention how generous she was because she built mosques and madrasas. She had brought the family together after Ogadai's death and called the Kurultai to elect Goyuk Khan. After Guyuk Khan's death, with the help of Batu, she promoted her son, Monke Khan, to the throne. After purging some 300 or so rivals, Monke Khan restarted the divine mission of the Mongols, conquest. He sent his brother, Hulagu Khan, to conquer the Middle East, while Kublai Khan was sent on taking the rest of China. He himself died in 1259, ruling the empire at its greatest extent before it was divided shortly after him. Hulagu Khan conquered the Middle East, ended the assassins, and sacked Baghdad, the cultural heart of Islam, in 1258, ending the Abbasid Caliphate. It was his army, though without him at the helm, that became the first Mongol army to lose a major battle, when the Mamluk Sultanate defeated them in 1260 at the Battle of Anjalut. He declared himself the Il Khan, meaning the obedient or subservient Khan. His descendants ruled the Middle East till the 1340s. After Monke Khan, his brother Kublai Khan became the fifth Khakan of the Mongol Empire, thanks in no small part to his conquest of China. Kublai Khan is the most well-known and important Khakan after Chinggis himself. He had to defeat his younger brother Ari Khan in the Toluid civil war, marking the end of Chinggisid unity. He also founded the Yuan dynasty of China. An interesting point to note here. His daughter, Princess Jaeguk, was married to the king of Korea, so the remaining rulers of the kingdom of Goryeo were descendants of Kublai Khan and hence of Chinggis Khan himself. After him, the title of Khakan was used by various of his descendants, but in reality, the Mongol Empire didn't exist anymore and they were more accurately emperors of China. They held China till 1370 when they were pushed out by the Ming dynasty. They continued to rule parts of Mongolia till the 1630s. By the year 1400, less than two centuries after Chinggis' death, it would be fair to say that none of his empire's successor Khanids were major players in world politics anymore. This decline had come largely because of infighting among the cousins of the third generation. This infighting only grew with each generation. The last descendant of Chinggis Khan to rule independently was Sayyid Mir Muhammad Alim Khan, the last Amir of Bukhara who was overthrown by the Russians in 1920. So, that was a look at the family tree of Genghis or Genghis Khan. Again, if you want to buy this chart, you can head over to our website, usefulcharts.com. Thanks for watching.